All right, so I went over for the first time this stop killing gaming thing from the EU, and we actually looked at the statement of the website. We even went to Rossman's response, and then we even went to Thor's channel and watched some of his response. And I think during the whole thing, I wasn't really sure where I land because it's such a complicated topic, but this has to be one of the most influential potential laws for all of software development. I really encourage you to take a look at it and really understand the potential impact, not just on games, but actually on web dev and other services as well. Stop killing games. I actually saw this being all over my feed just recently. It was even in my like my my Google News section, which is where I get a lot of these articles from, which is pretty uh, surprising. Um, and so I think the general idea I, I, I don't quite understand is this site is dedicated to real world action on ending the practice of publishers destroying video games they have sold to customers. And I think there's there's something to this. The things I don't understand, we're going to have to try to weed out, but I have a general take on maintenance and the cost of maintenance and what it's going to do and the risk it's going to add is my is my general guess of what I think a lot of people's uh, people's take is, is that if I understand this correctly, it is that these online games will like cut the service, thus rendering their game inoperable. And people are getting very, very upset about that. So let's first read this and make sure that that's what we're seeing here. An increased number of video games are sold as goods, but designed to be completely unplayable for everyone as soon as support ends. The legality of this practice is untested worldwide, and many governments do not have clear laws regarding th these actions. It is our goal to have uh, authorities examine this behavior and hopefully end it, as it is an assault on both customer rights and preservation of media. Uh, we are pursuing this in two ways. Interesting. The video game, The Crew, published by uh, Ubisoft, was recently destroyed for all players and had a player base of at least 12 million people. Is this true? 12 million people were playing this regularly? Or is this one of those things where it's like 12 million people during the lifetime signed up for it, but now it's actually down to like four people playing it? Can we just all be real here? If Ubisoft had 12 million people playing a game, there ain't no way that they're like, oh, let's kill that shit. Right, 12 million people bought the game. Okay, that's fair. Due to the game size and France's strong consumer protection laws, this represents one of the best opportunities to hold publishers accountable for this action. If we are successful in charges being pressed against Ubisoft, this could have a ripple effect on the video game industry to prevent publishers from destroying more games. It's, it's going to have a lot of ripple effects, and just to simply state it as this, we're just doing good. Life is like one of those squishy balls. When you squeeze it, it changes fundamentally what's under pressure and what has to give way. There's no there's no just simply putting Pandora back into a box and that's it. Right? There's 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 always going to be more to it. Official government petitions have introduced the prohibited let's see introduced to prohibit the practice of intentionally rendering commercial video games inoperable when the support ends. Petitions for the UK, Canada, Australia and now the entire EU has opened. So I mean uh, right away I have to like I just have a strong question well what about like wow? Like, at some point, WoW will not be a game. Does that mean WoW has to run servers indefinitely? Because that's what it sounds like. Uh, if you're able, please engage with the assisting the effort. Okay, look at the uh, look at the fact. Let's look at the facts before we before we make up our mind. How are publishers destroying video games? An increasing number of video games are designed to rely on a server. The uh, on a server the publisher controls in order to uh, for the game to function. Yeah, I mean, like I generally hate that with uh, uh, mobile games. Like, have you ever had a mobile game that you downloaded that you're like, oh, I'm gonna play this on the airplane. You get on the airplane, it's just like waiting for a connection to server. It, it I, I mean, it is truly a very sad state of affairs that we can't just have a video game that works, especially on mobile. That's like emotionally painful. Um, this acts as a lifetime to the game or Diablo. You know, like I really love the fact with Diablo 2, I could just do a LAN game. I really loved LAN game Diablo 2. In fact, I would argue that LAN game Diablo 2 was one of the peak experiences of video gaming. Uh, this acts as a lifetime to the game. When the publisher decides to turn this off, it is essentially cutting off life support to the game, making it completely inoperable to all customers. Companies that do this often intentionally prevent people from repairing the game also by withholding vital components. When this happens, the game is destroyed and no one can ever operate it again. Okay, yes. In other words... The game is largely an online game. By the way, for those that don't understand what I'm doing, is I want to make sure I go through all the content before I fully unleash an opinion, just in case I have some misconceptions. So let's not jump to conclusions, because I see a lot of people are like, Thor said this! Oh, you're saying this! Why don't we do this? Hold on, let's just, like, let's just make sure we get, let's, let's make sure we get the idea before we go off, okay?
Uh, while video games are primarily just for the entertainment and not much consequence, the practice of seller destroying a product someone has already paid for represents a radical assault on customer rights and even the concept of ownership itself. If this practice is not stopped, it may be codified into law and spread uh, uh, to other products of more importance over time. Funny that the EU says that hippity hoppity destroy private property. Which one is it? Are we destroying private property or are we not EU? Uh, such as agricultural equipment, educational products, medical devices, etc. Uh, it is important consumer maintain a basic level of rights as not to be overrun by predatorial practices. Additionally, video games are uniquely creative works. The concept of destroying every existing copy of a book, song, or film would be considered a cultural loss for society. Uh, again, I do not think that this is... Uh, this right here seems a little bit weird. That I could create a work of art and then be liable to keep that art going. That I wouldn't be able to say, you know what? No, my art is done. I think I was following it up until this line. This line feels very hard for me just to understand in general why I, the art creator, should be liable for cre or keeping my art out there. I don't think I should have to keep my art out there. I think I should be able to destroy it ever. If you sell it to me, now that, that that's a good, that, now that's a better argument. By the way, that's a much better argument. If I sell it to you, there's much, there's most certainly a different uh, liability there. But this, just the concept of every existing, like, you can't, this is a reach. While the less recognized medium, video games still deserve to have basic protections against complete and willful destruction of many of its works. I don't think so. So if you're talking about art for the sake of art, I do not believe you should be able to hold artists liable to keep their art out there. They should be able to destroy it whenever and however they want. That's separate than the buying part. You know what I mean? It's like uh, keeping publishing a book that the author wrote. Yeah, maybe. It's not that quite that simple. Right? I think you're, we might be, you know. Anyways, if companies face penalties for destroying copies of games they have sold, this is very like, uh, likely to start curbing this behavior. If a company is forced to allow customers to retain their games in even one country, implementing those fixes worldwide become a trivial issue for them. So if destroying the game you paid for, actually, this is highlighting the most important part of this entire thing, which I think a lot of people might be missing. Uh, if so, destroying a game you paid for becomes illegal in France. Companies that patch the game would likely apply the same patch to the game worldwide. An analogy for this process is how ACCC in Australia forced Valve to offer refunds on Steam. So Valve ended up offering them to people worldwide as a result. This is also... Okay, so the highlight of this is that this shows the weakness of the internet. The internet is supposed to be a free place, right? But the reality to the internet is that any single government can make laws to affect what's online. And I think that that is kind of wild. Like if you really think about it, that one, like say France says, you know what, video games, you can't do this anymore. They're actually making a law that reaches into every single country, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's good or bad. I'm not saying the goodness or the badness of the law, because there are obviously some good things. But that also inherently causes one of two problems. One, France is not going to get the video games that they want. Or B, companies will be held globally responsible for something one single state can make. There's definitely a, there's definitely a thing there. Definitely a thing there, minimally to think about. Uh, aren't uh, let's see, aren't you asking companies to support games forever? Okay, so this is this is what I this is my big thing. No, we are not asking for that at all. We are in favor of publishers ending support for a game whenever they choose. What we are asking for is that they implement an end-of-life plan to modify or patch the game so that it can run on consumer systems with no further support from the company being necessary. I can feel malicious compliance coming in so hard. Imagine that they're like, okay, yeah, totally do that. Here you go. Here's a server. We've, we've, wiped, every single, um, we've wiped every single external service that it relies on. You have to fulfill all these external services. And then B, here's all the code. End of life support is that you're going to have to learn how, you know, you're going to have to get your compile chain up. You're going to need to compile all these things. You're going to need to be able to make these servers run. And it's going to, there's going to be some thin layer. I guarantee you this is what's going to happen. There's going to be this. There's going to be the support layer, right? Because this is how I would do it. Honestly, this is how I would do it. Uh, there's going to be the support layer, which is a very small, thin shell. Then there's going to be the game saving service right? The game saving service. There's going to be some sort of like ping service. There's going to be some sort of network, uh, you know, some sort of, you know, network management service. There's going to be all these services that are going to pop off here. 
And then they're going to give you this thin shell of a support and say, okay, for you, if, if you wish to continue to do this, you need to be able to have your service up. We can't do any of these because these are proprietary game secrets. And then you get this like 500 piece of line code that really is being backed up by 100,000 lines of code. And then they're just like, here you go. The community will do it. The community will pretty much do it for almost none of them. Right. Uh, never doubt the ingenuity of a community. I totally agree. I never doubt that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly. I was about to get to this point. I'm actually totally with Thor on this one. I think it's kind of crazy. But anyways, let's keep on going. Uh, we agree. It is unrealistic to expect companies to support games indefinitely and do not advocate for that way or that in any way. Additionally, there are already real world exemplar, uh, examples of publishers ending support for uh, online only games in a responsible way, such as these ones. All right. Uh, let's see. Aren't game licensed, not sold to customers? The uh, short answer is there's a large legal gray area, depending on the country. In the United States, this is generally the case. In other countries, the law is not clear at all, since license agreements cannot override n national laws. Those laws often consider video games as goods, which many customers' uh, protections that apply to them. So despite what license agreement may say, in some countries you are indeed sold your copy of the game license. Some terms still apply, however. For example, you are typically only sold your individual copy of the game license for personal use not the intellectual property of the game itself okay let's read one more because uh, let's read let's read this one right here let's see what about large-scale mmos I isn't it impossible for customers to run the servers when they're shut down not at all uh, however limitations can apply several mmo rpgs have been shut down over the years server emulation emerged that are capable of hosting thousands of uh thousands of other players just on a single user system not all will be this scalable, however. For extra demanding video games that require powerful servers, the average user will not have access to. The game will not be playable on the same scale as when the developer or publisher was hosting it. That said, there is no excuse for players not to be able to continue playing the game in some form once support ends. I feel like I, I, now, I now have to jump in here. So without knowing what Thor has said, here are the things that I really see as just impractical altogether. Let's start with the MMO one. The thing I really dislike about this is that a company could build up a server. They could work very, very well and create something that they are very, very hap happy about. And this, this server could have a lot of secrets on it. They could really, um, they could really do – you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into this. And so the result of this is that they have to – they are forced to open source slash give away the server. Is that what they're saying? Is that that's how I'm taking it or I'm reading it is that – they have to give away the server or B, they have to do what I do and virtually give you nothing. Like that's kind of how I'm taking it is that this is, this is getting into a really weird gray area. I mean, I guess what they could do, the only way that makes sense is that you own the MMO game, but the MMO game does not, does not work without a backing server. You should be able to set your server and, you should be, and then the company could provide the protocol to play the server. That's how at least I see some of these things. And then they don't have to give up their secrets, at least. And I think that, that at, at minimally, at least, that isn't horrifying. And then you could make this whole law work where you could say, hey, if the community really wants it, then they can have their own thing. Here's the protocol. Now, obviously, whenever you expose a protocol to a game, you inherently then also say, hackers, please run amok in everything that we do. Counter-Strike has managed to do it. I know. I, I understand. Okay, we're all programmers here. Like, pretty much everybody in this chat is a programmer. Can we just be real for a second? You work on a game. And now someone says you need to support single player and you've only ever built it for multiplayer or online or on a server. You think for a second that this is going to be some easy change? It's not an easy change, okay? you got to remember that a huge portion of games are going to be written by just individual people. These aren't AAA companies, okay? We all understand the, we like anyone that thinks this is somehow some simple change is just out of their goddamn mind. Okay, we all know this is not the case. Refactor incoming. All right, this is very, 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 very difficult endeavor. Okay, so for anyone to think that this is just free and easy is out of their out of their mind. That's not the point, though. Of course, it's part of the point. Of course, this is part of the point. This is equally going to like the the problem is I think everybody puts in their head some AAA game. But you got to remember that these laws don't just apply to AAA games. They apply to all games. There's going to be a bunch of single individual people that have never programmed something to work this way. And then you are effectively either one, cutting out a market that they can't go to, or B, 
they just can't re- like the, it's going to add a whole new like something to their development process. I don't think this is as simple as people are making it. People are making it as simple as oh, you should just do it. But we all write software here. Like we all know how difficult software is. Single player is great, right? Like I I mean, I think single player games are fantastic. All right? Netcode is hard already. Netcode is really 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 hard. And so any any time that I see the government requiring people to like keep the lights on, the problem is is that what does this mean? What are they actually asking the company to do? Cuz it doesn't sound like they're they're asking the company necessarily to keep hosting. If they say you have to release this and and if that if the result of this law is that a company has to do this, I mean, is it that bad? Is it that hard? I don't think this is necessarily that hard. We I could I think we could all agree that uh that if you had to provide the protocol to the server plus be able to set the address to whatever you want, that seems somewhat reasonable, but I mean, I know a lot of you guys, like a lot of you people in here, write just simply like React code, and your React app is so unconfigurable and so unrefactorable, you should have at least some mercy in your mind as to what this means. Okay, so it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous how easy everybody is to dunk on other people's code when you know how hard it is for you to do anything. Someone asked for a gosh, someone asked for a fucking button. And you lose weeks of your time. And then you're expecting these people just to make a single player experience? Like, can we just all be developers here for a second and realize what this is being asked to do? Dude, people people just think this is just, oh, it's so easy. It would only apply to games released in the future. Well, how long into the future? How long? Uh, how long did Breath uh, of the Wild take to make? Five years. So how far into the game development process does this does this law take place? GTA six? Where are we at on GTA six? I feel like Prime is too disconnected from normal consumers to understand the concerns. What do you mean I'm too disconnected? I feel the exact same thing. Dude, I have games that I liked that don't work anymore. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to be realistic here. Right? Like I want to make sure that like I know for a fact that whenever you make a whenever you make a law, I know Duke Nukem's not where a video game Duke Nukem spent more than 14 years in development. I know, I know. I'm just saying, whenever you make a change, there is 100% impact. It's not simple. It's not just like oh, we made a change and everything's better. You put on new restrictions onto developers, which means less games are made. Every time you add one restriction, there's one less game that's being made, or maybe two less, maybe five less. I really do hope that what they what they mean by the end of it, um, that it's something like this, that there has to be some sort of basic pathway for any community to be able to develop its own version of the server. If that's the point, then okay. That's fine. It still means that 99% of your games will be inoperable because people aren't going to take the time to develop this. And the few that are, then people, yeah. Some, uh, some of these essays are not chats, I know. Yeah, I mean, who 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 hasn't felt this, right? I have loved many games that have gone that have gone way, that have gone to this uh, to the wayside. Okay, how complex is a server compared to a typical API? Um, exceptionally, exceptionally complex. This is how you can think about it. All right, so whenever you make like, let's just start with a simple CRUD app. The be the 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 most easy. A simple CRUD app starts off effectively with the database and then some sort of API to the database and then some sort of REST API to that and then some sort of UI. So this would be like your typical kind of thing. This would be your gets, this would be your posts, this would be the actual API that it's communicating with and then this thing has some sort of this. Now really simple versions of this don't even have this middle part, right? Like your business logic is effectively non-existent, okay? So this would be like, this would be your like HTTP API, this would be your business logic, and this would be your database, okay? Now, this is very, very simple, okay? We've obviously made this really, really simple. And the reason why we did that is because this is a request, and this is a response. This is very one-dimensional playing of a game. Games do not exist like that. So we have an upgrade, right? We have an upgrade that has a WebSocket that is going to be pushing 
down changes or uh, pulling up your changes into the server, right? So this would be a more complex version. And then you have the same thing, except for your business logic now has to get a lot larger because it's going to have to manage all the real timiness of web sockets and everything like that. But it's still generally the same picture. You have a database in the backing. You do some stuff. Maybe that database isn't a database. Maybe it's a Redis caching that can go down, and it doesn't matter if you lose any of the information. It's all real time. It's all ephemeral. It's all something, right? Or maybe it goes off, and then it spews off into something else that does cold storage. But during this one, it's not cold storage, and it goes here. So some messages might be lost, but not all of them, right? Very, very, very simple stuff, right? Uh, a game, the entire thing is this, okay? You have to have a game that runs headless. And instead of being the game itself, it has to be like the resolver of the game. It has to be the thing that takes in the 100 or 200 or 500 players, determines all the actions to take and who's breaking the law and who's not breaking the law. And then it updates the consumer on their game that's going to be a thinner slice, the consumer side game does not do as much calculations as the server side game. The server side game does a lot of those calculations. And that's what makes this thing so dang hard, right? This is what makes things so complex is that the server is actually much more complicated than the game itself. And so how easy is this to write? I don't know how easy these things are to write. Now, there might be some nice things that come out of this, such as general libraries for some like general network mechanics that can work on a lot of games. Fantastic. Yay. Uh, but then there's also a lot of games that don't require this much uh, complexity. I would assume something like Elden Ring um, might not have as complicated of a server as say WoW. Right? We can all agree with that. There's not all that all that much complicated. Uh, but I would, I would assume that something like Black Ops right, or Warzone would be much, much more complicated than Elden Ring's. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's just to make those server components configs binaries available once support ends. But the problem is, is okay. So let's just say you're correct on that. Let's just say it's exactly this. How much of that is company proprietary stuff versus actual? Like, where do these lines end and start? Like I said, that's why you already know whatever's going to happen is going to be something like this. You're going to have some thin piece of just crap. That's going to say, oh, this is us supporting you. And then everything that's important and difficult to work is going to be these external libraries that will be out there, right? And you're just going to, you're going to have effectively nothing. You're going to have a very thin thing. It's, it, it's going to be almost no different than them simply providing you the protocol. And all this is going to do is going to make a lot more cheating. You do know, you do understand that if they provide the protocol, more cheating will happen. Yeah, the community will solve it. Sometimes the community will solve it. The community won't solve it every single time. It will solve it some of the time. There will still be games you love that nobody's going to do it unless if you do it. I actually think this is probably the most important point of all of this, which is let's say they go forward and they say from here on out, when you create a live service game, you need a way for somebody else to effectively take it over to do all this kind of stuff. All right, you need to be able to provide the servers. You need to be able to provide the code, whatever they say required, right? And so besides for the massive amounts of licensing and issues that are going to go on with that and all these problems that are going to happen, let's say we avoid all of that and somehow they say just what I said, which is you have, what's it called? You have a uh, protocol and you have the ability to update what, where the server is pointing. And every game has to come with this when they go offline. They have to provide the exact protocol Oh, gosh, I just made balls again. Uh, they have to provide the exact protocol and uh, the ability to update where the server points to. Okay, so we have all of that. Fantastic. Everything's great. We all agree. We're all happy here, right? All right, good. The thing that I see about this law that's so insidious, and I'm using the term insidious correctly, is that this will very quickly make its way into the web dev world. Think about all the startups and all the things that try to do some sort of SaaS company, and then they inevitably go out. This is gonna this is gonna cause a whole ripple effect throughout the industry. And I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying it will most certainly cause a real industry wide ripple, because software as a service exists. Right? Think about uh, think about uh, right now like uh, Excel. And Microsoft Office, you can't really use Microsoft Office without applying uh, for a yearly license or whatever it is. It should only be large companies. What is a large company? 
Imagine they force you to maintain Harpoon 1. Yeah, ex exactly. And so there's a lot there's a lot of interesting things to it. So I just want you to know that it's not it's it's going to be an interesting time here. Let me do this one cuz this one at high you thaw, curious as to what your thoughts are on the stop killing games, activism and the By the way, Thor, please don't DMCA me for this music, Thor. I know this is your music. Please, Thor, don't don't DMCA. Don't DMCA your boy. I'm literally going to be staying in your hotel room shortly. If you if you hit me with that one, I'm going to be sad. Okay, I just want you to know. I'll be sad. You petition. <sighs> I've given a take on this so many times today. I, I don't agree with it whatsoever. Yeah, I don't agree with it whatsoever. I, I don't like the way that they portrayed it. I think that it's dangerous to indies as it is because the language is incredibly vague. Points for trying to go in... A direction that makes sense but negative a million points for trying to be incredibly vague with your language when working how was the how did he receive death threats for that starting off right there there is like no way like that was like single-handedly the most beautiful take you could have good to take down thing bad with vague language what Dude, you're telling me this tepid take, this lukewarm take, is death threat deserving? Dude, come on, like that is crazy. ...with government entities. It's, as written, it is quite dangerous. And I'm not... All right, uh -huh. there's another. there's another one of these clips. Uh, we're getting, oh my gosh, I have now officially... I am now officially on to Asmund Gold's side. How, okay, dude, this is okay. This is a wild one to be all the in the full circle. I'm now officially into Asmund Gold. Here we go. We also have a values clash. You state repeatedly that a game being permanently disabled is not a problem. It is not. A live service game is meant to end one day. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. This is where we very clearly disagree. You're actually the most high profile person I know that is adamantly against what we're doing. Cool. If you're interested, I'd be fine with having a discussion with you on where we could at least clarify things, but your choice. I don't think I want to do that. And the reason why is this. It is because specifically your video that made me not interested in wanting to talk to you. It is specifically this portion of your video right here where you discuss reasons why your initiative could pass. And your description of this I find to be disgusting. Politicians like easy wins. And this doesn't require them to do much at all. Politicians generally don't care about video games. So this isn't of big consequence to them or most of their constituencies. EU law is already unclear on a lot of this practice anyway, and we would be making it easy for them to settle it. It falls in line with other consumer practices. You know, how when you buy something, you're generally allowed to keep it. And finally, this is a diversion from really serious topics that politicians would prefer not to deal with. So politicians are going to put this forward because it's an easy win. They don't understand the subject matter, and it's a diversion from more serious issues. We, we already discussed this, which is do you really want these people making these laws, especially if they're going to have easy wins because they're going to go to the most hyperbolic version of it all, right? Because the loudest people on the Internet are always the ones that are going to be the most hyperbolic side in which the politicians are going to agree with. Do you want the most hyperbolic people doing that? I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't at all. I want none of it. I don't have any respect for that. And I don't have any reason to have a conversation with you because of this. By the way, this whole, like that said, we have a bunch of values clash. You stated repeatedly that a game being permanently disabled is not a problem. For a live service game, I can agree with that. If it is truly a live service game, like, wow. Again, it'd be great if they gave us a server address and the protocol they use, and then anyone can implement it. That would be like the nicest possible thing they could do. And I think that that would probably be a nice little uh, addition, even though it's such a stupid law. But let's just say that they put that as a part of the law, which they won't. There's no way a politician is going to make a 15-word law. You must provide X and X and X. Right? There's just no way that's ever going to happen. But nonetheless, I understand. Live service games do go down, right? No way. Uh, there's no law that you're going to understand. Like, that's the point. There's been WoW uh, server emulators for like 15 years. Yes, but that's because WoW is a massive game. You got to remember that a lot of these games don't have the same level of people that are going to be putting in that, that work, right? Uh, so which game went offline that triggered all this? It was called um, The Crew. The pro protocol isn't going to help. If you could do a server address, press the protocol, you could exactly make it. You could, you could literally recreate the server yourself. I'm, I think that's the most reasonable one. It just is. All right, Hall, let's see what he has to say here, not just so I understand it. Not a fan of it at all. 
Why do they keep asking this? Because it reached a pinnacle point instead of EU where everyone's talking about it on Reddit and Twitter. And because everyone's talking about it on Reddit and Twitter, everyone's taking it to me because I'm the game dev guy on the internet. It's yep, going yes. to keep happening. I'm not surprised. But to be real with you, I can't back that that process. I can't. As written, the language is too vague. It doesn't solve the root issue, and it creates a, a litany of new issues. And that's a problem. That's the major issue for me. I can give you a perfect example of why this sucks. Okay? So I'm going to give you a perfect example. Uh, salary range, Netflix, senior software engineer. I don't know if you know this, but California made a law that you had to advertise the salary range. Okay? It's, it's a requirement now for a salary range to be, to be a part of this. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the salary range for this thing is $170,000 to $720,000. This, my friends, is called malicious compliance. Okay, are they doing what they said? Yes, they did. Does this actually do anything? No, it doesn't. This is why not all laws are great, and we shouldn't have people that don't understand laws making laws. But here we are. There was one recently on Netflix that was literally $90,000 to $1 million. It's just like, gee, I wonder what I'm going to get paid. There's only a $900,000 difference between the two. Make malicious compliance illegal? How would you? Oh, my gosh. How would you make? <laughs> you can't comply with the law as written. You have to do it better than we write it, minimally. <laughs> I mean, so just remember this, okay? This is why I'm fully on Thor's team that it, in the sense that it has to be written in very precise terms, precisely going after a very targeted practice. And I think we could all agree on something like, if you have a campaign, if you make a single player game, you sell it as a single player game. See, I, I already can see the problem here. I can actually already seal the problem. Okay, so let's go like this. Let's make the law super precise, okay? One, it's gonna be a single player game only. Two, you advertise it, as a single player game. Three, uh, it goes down when your services go down, right? So this is kind of like, this is kind of the crux of it, shall we say, right? Okay, what's gonna happen? Well, they're gonna have a single player game. Two, they're gonna have an advertisement as a single player game. This is the crew. The crew was the one that kind of started all of this. I'm not really sure if uh, there, you know, I think the massively multiplayer online games, I think that you're just no shot crazy talk to say that they need to adhere to the same laws. So I'm just going to try to narrow it down to a singular little thing, right? This is the strongest case for the initiative, right? We all agree this one right here, right? This is for the crew. There we go. So unlike the people that are being very radical and dumb, see like you right here, you're being radical and dumb. We're just trying to create a single, very precise shot law that is very well understood. Okay, so here we go. We create this. If you fall under these three things, if you fall under these three things, you are incorrect, and you must do something with this right here. You need to make it single player. Okay, good. We've now made a very simple law that has absolutely no, like nothing sensational about it. It's very, very thin, right? Okay, we can all agree with this. So what happens? Well, you have a game that's going to say it's single player. You're going to have a game that says it's single player in advertisement. When you buy it, within the first line, probably, of the Terms of Service, or the EULA, will say, this game only exists as an online service and will be taken down. And by you buying this, you agree that your game will be taken down. And they'll probably be able to get around this in some crazy way in which you'll never foresee. And the same cycle is going to keep on happening because it's just that I mean, they have to think about this so much. It's going to be ridiculous. And to try to write this law such that this little malicious compliance, such that the 90000 to $1 million a year range doesn't exist, it's going to be really, really hard. It's going to be so, so, so difficult to just get this right, just to get this one thing right. You think we should throw MMOs in there? Dude, I'm no way right now. There ain't no way, right? Like we have, like you just gotta understand the difficulty of this of this thing that has to happen. That's why I'm saying, don't go all in on it. Make it so dang precise, right? Live service games, not just MMOs. Yeah, I know the the hard part is like not all live service games are created equal. What happened if you ha what happened if you have a game that's single player, but the only live service part of it can, can really add to the game? 
it's really hard to say whether it's like weapon if it may, it's a quintessential feature of the game. I don't know. I think there's a whole bunch to it. Uh, first, I, uh, Eula, we didn't uh, sell you the game. We sold you access to our server, and we were retaining the right to remove that service. I know it's going to be some bullshit like this, and it's going to be complete horseshit, by the way. I'm going to completely disagree with whatever comes out of these uh, these game companies and taking advantage of it. That's the problem with legislation. They uh, try to pass wide-ass law because it takes uh, so long to pass them, and then people find loopholes. Yeah. Or, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so that's why... I would love to see something that's like a single, like, it should only have to be a few hundred words, right? It should be super, super precise. And then when that preciseness isn't precise enough, you pass a second video game act that goes into the next one. And it does the next most precise thing. And you slowly grab ground that makes sense. If you make it not precise, people aren't going to do it. A hundred word laws don't exist. They should. They should. They should. I think there was a recent push inside Congress. I forgot who did it that said there could only be laws passed that are like up to cer certain amount of uh, rules or a certain amount of a certain amount of words, which, by the way, is really, really great because you do know you do understand what the next level we're going to have is. Right. The next level is that the LLMs are going to be because of Congress and their ability to just only be on the Internet and dunk. And that's it. Like that's now Congress's new full time job is Twitter. Uh, we're now going to have LLMs writing laws, and the laws are going to be just effing just ridiculous. Okay, Laws must fit in a tweet, and not a tweet longer. A tweet. That was Ben Carson's... Uh, our, oh, that was Ben Carson's one? I actually... I love this law. By the way, k kudos to Ben Carson on that one, right? D to do that. That's a, great, that's a great rule, and we should all be behind laws that we can all understand. So what's the bad side effects of the law? That publishers can't falsely advertise? See, again... Let's try not to be a dick. You know what you're doing when you typed it that way. You're trying to be a dick. Uh, all devs have to conform with some consumer right uh, is uh, is to state in clear text before purchase that the game is a service that will stop working. So that's that's a good idea, right? Your second part's a really great one, right? Your second idea is that's good. I would agree with this. Maybe that's the law that if you have a server, if you have any form of server reliance, you must state in very clear and specified places, maybe even put some sort of required stamp, kind of like USDA organic. You must have some sort of some sort of badging that says that this game could die if the servers go down. And it has to be visible and obvious to everybody purchasing the game. There we go. That's a good rule, right? That's a nice rule that we could all, like, uh, it's just another cookie. I know. The problem is, is how, how are people going to be able to skirt around it? I don't know. But something that gives people the idea. It's called the TOS. No, but we don't want a TOS. We don't want a TOS. Nobody reads the TOS. You need something that's very, very simple. Are Americans known for their legal compliance? No, we're not even known for our legal compliance, to let alone. Uh, they should have a Band-Aid function in law uh, that goes faster than normal. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of good things that should happen, but things don't happen. I mean, to be real, it's very good that laws move slow. Okay, I know a lot of people may find that very confusing, but it's very good that laws move slow. You know that the you know the the places where laws move really fast, they tend to be much more uh, dictatorship driven or much more authoritarian, right? And so the less authoritarian the government is, the slower laws typically move, and that's a good thing. And I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with laws not moving that fast. But I would like if laws could be more concise that I could read, right? Like what was it? Obamacare was eighty thousand pages of laws. Does, is anybody aware of anything that's inside there? Can anybody tell me what's inside America's Health Act? No, I don't think that there's like probably four people on earth that actually even know what's happening. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's just ridiculous. Scrum lawmaking, let's go. No, not even Congress. Not even Congress. I've read 80 pages and gave up. Yeah, and you're, dude, you already are in the top 1% of, of readers. And you're probably not even a lawyer, reasonable breasts. Do you think I'm going to get death threats for this? I hate, by the way, I hope you guys understand that I, I'm, I'm all here on, on team. I'm on team. We should make things better. And we should, per, like, I hate live service games. I, I really do. I really actually have grown to hate them because they're just always money grabs. They're always shitty implemented. There's always bugs. They're always pushed. They're like the new web dev, but for game industry. And I absolutely hate that. But please don't be a jackass. Okay, just because I don't agree with you, just because Thor said he likes the idea of tackling this problem, but he doesn't like the generality of the law, somehow, 
somehow get some death threats. This is crazy. Can we all agree that that's crazy? We shouldn't be like that. And lastly, vote with your wallets. Absolutely. Vote with your wallet. Don't buy things if you don't want more of it. Okay? If you want more of it, buy more Fortnite skins. Buy more. More. Many more. Many, many more. Because then you can get more of it. You can get all of it you've ever wanted. Every game can possibly have all the world's most delicious skins and all of that. Anyways. All right. The name is I Gotta Go Pee. Uh, Jen.